الحمد للہ رب العالمین و آخیب للمتقین و لا عدوان الا علی الظالمین و اشر ان لا الہ الا اللہ وحده لا شریک له قیوم السموات والارضین وضو الالیہی والعبودیہ على خلقه اجمعین وأشهد أن لا إله إلا وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله خاتم النبيين صلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد something incredibly important that we have to be conscious of and careful with regards to is making new principles in the religion making new qawaid and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and protect us from that so that we do not fall into bid'ah in starting something in the religion which is not from the religion or changing something in the religion and distorting it may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us if any way we've fallen into bid'ah May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and may Allah protect us from falling into it into the future. Because it's so serious and it's so easy to do for someone if they speak a lot about the religion. And that follows that falls under the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who said, Man ahtatha fi amrina hadha ma laysa minhu fuhu rad. Wa fi riwayatin li Muslim man amala amalan laysa alayhi amruna fuhu rad. So the Prophet ﷺ said, Whoever innovates in this affair of ours, then they will have it. Or whoever does something in this affair, affair, affair of ours, or innovates in this affair of ours, they will have it rejected. And whoever begins in innovation in this affair of ours, or in, in, in this deen, then they, will, then they will have it rejected. Letting us know a, a faida from this, Sheikh Abdul Masin al Abad, Sheikhana, Hafid Allah Ta'ala, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him and bless him, with, bless him and forgive him of his sins and bless him with Jannah to Fardos and bless him to be of the Salihin. Sheikh Abdul Masin, when explaining those two hadith, he said one of them refers to the person who does an act of bid'ah who does an act of innovation man ahtatha fi amrina hadha ma laysa minhu furad or man man amala amalan laysa alayhi amrana furad that this hadith here refers to a person doing an act of bid'ah maybe they picked it up from someone else or what have you but the other one man ahtatha fi amrina hadha ma laysa minhu furad this one shows man ahtatha whoever innovates meaning that this is the person who began this and we know the other hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that when a person uh innovates or they leave a, a sunnah sayya behind that they will get the sin of doing it and the sin for everyone who follows them in that wa iyadun billah min dhalika so that shows us the danger for ahl bid'ah for those imams of dalala like for example in this time and age people who have passed on like uh, Abdullah Hariri the leader of the Ahbash group just think of the sins that he will get for the bid'ah and for his takfir of great imams like Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah and considering them mubtadi'at uh, and make a takfir of Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab and other than him ta'ala jami'a that those people for their innovation in the religion with regards to al-asma'i wa sifat and their uh, other deviations that they will get the sin of making that and the sin for those who follow them in that and likewise people like Sayyid Qutb for his taking the methodology and developing and furthering the methodology of Akhwan al-Muslimin and Hassan al-Binna the father of Akhwan al-Muslimin as well for what they left behind 
people want to look at their good, but look at what they left behind from takfir, especially Sayyid Qutb. He took takfir in this day and age. He revived the call to takfir, revived the call to the Khwarij with his, his claims that all the Muslim societies are the societies of Jahiliyyah and that there are no Muslims to be found in this day and age and all these other statements of his that you'll find in Milestones and his Tafsir and his other books So what about the sin of these people for what they left behind? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best their reckoning. A beautiful statement from Allama Ibn Al-Qayyim Al-Jawziyah Rahimahullah Ta'ala in his book Zad Al-Ma'ad which speaks about the importance of avoiding making new principles in the religion. Because sometimes you come across in the books, even from the scholars that are well known for the sunnah, at times you will find a principle that you wonder, did this come from Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Faham of the Salaf? And sometimes you'll find that this might be a mistake of a sheikh or an alim that another sheikh or an alim points out. That this is not a principle that the set was known to the Salaf, or this was a mistake here. And then you'll see that the Shaykh, out of humility, will correct that. The point being is that no one is infallible. As the Prophet وسلم, said, Kulu, Kulu ibn Adam khata, khata'ina tawabun. All the children of Adam make mistakes, and the best of those who make mistakes are those who repent. And with that being said, that no one is infallible. We also have to know that when we hear a principle that's been translated in English or in its root source of Arabic, we have to look to see if you have the ability, if you're a student of knowledge and you have the ability to be able to look at the sources and understand the sources and take that to the aqwal of the other ulama and the, and the ulama of the salaf, then you have to compare what is being said to the statements of the salaf. Is this in accordance with how the salaf understood this issue? or what have you. And that will let you know whether it's a sound qaida or not. Whether it's something that the fatwa that's based upon it is sound or not. And this is a beautiful statement and this is exactly what Sheikh, Sheikh al-Islam Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala said and we're going to read his statement bi-idnillah. Qala Sheikh al-Islam Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala. Qal, فَمَنْ أَنْشَاءَ فَمَنْ أَنْشَاءَ أَقْوَالٍ وَأَسَّسَ كَوَاعِدْ بِحَسْبَ فَهْمِهِ وَتَعْوِيلِهِ لَمْ يَجِبْ عَلَى الْأُمَّةِ إِتْبَعَهَا وَلَا تَحَاكَمْ إِلَيْهَا حَتَّى تُعْرِدْ عَلَى مَا جَاءَ بِهِ رُسُولُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمُ فَإِنْ تَبَقْتُهُ وَوَفَقْتُهُ وَشُهِدَ لَهَا بِصِحَةٍ كُبِلَتْ حِنَائِذٍ وَإِنْ خَالَفْتُهُ وَاجِبَ رَدُّهَا وَإِتْرَاعُهَا فَإِنْ لَمْ يَتَبَيَّنْ فِيهَا أَحَدُ الْأَمْرَيْنِ جُعِلَتْ مَوْقُوفَةً وَكَانَ أَحْسِنْ أَحْوَالِهَا أَنْ يُجَوِّزْ الْحُكْمَ وَالْإِفْتَاءَ بِهَا وَتَرْكَهَا وَتَرْكَهُ قال الشيخ الإسلام رحمه الله تعالى in this beautiful عبارة he said that whoever makes a statement or an opinion and makes a principle according to his understanding or to his tafsir, his, 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 uh, his understanding, then it is not an obligation on the ummah to follow it or to make judgments in ac according to it until it has been compared to what the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam came with and then if it is practiced and it's in agreement with it with what the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam came with then it is witnessed or then it is uh, declared sound then it is known to be sound and it is accepted at this time but if it differs with it meaning differs with the sunnah then it is an obligation to reject it reject that principle and flee from it for and then if it is not clear 
either one of those affairs, meaning that it is in accordance with the sunnah or it goes against the sunnah, it's not clear. Then in that situation, it is made mokufa, meaning that we don't act upon it. We stop there. We stop and we don't practice according to it. We don't make fatawa, fatawa according to it or ahkam or rulings according to it. We stop because we don't know if it's sound or not. And he said, Rahimullah Ta'ala, and that is the best regarding, uh, regarding it. And to leave off judging by it and making a fatwa in accordance with it and that we should leave it. That was a statement of Shaykh al-Islam ibn, ibn al-Qayyum about those principles that are someone are statements and principles that people make in accordance with the religion of Islam, whether it's in agreement with it or it's, it differs with it, or it is not clear. And he gave the general, the, the rulings, how we should operate in each of those three situations. Qala Sheikh Ubaidah Jabri, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, making a, a, a statement regarding the statement of Sheikh al-Islam Ibn al-Qayyim. Sheikh Ubaid said, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, he said, وَهَذَا لِأَنَّ مُتَقَرَّ عِنْدَ الْأَئِمَّةِ مِنَ السَّلَفِ الصَّالِحِ أَنَّ الْأَقْوَالَ النَّاسِ وَأَعْمَالِهِمْ تُوزِنُوا بِنَصِّ وَإِجْمَعِ فَمَنْ وَافِقْ نَصٍ أَوْ إِجْمَاعٍ كُبِلَ مِنْهُ وَمَنْ خَالَفْ وَاحِدٍ مِنْهُمَا رُدَّ عَلَيْهِ كَائِنٍ مِنْ كَانْ A beautiful statement by Sheikh Ubaid that we have to try to practice and he, he made this statement in reference to that beautiful statement of Shaykh al-Islam ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala the Shaykh said and this is in accordance with something which is a consistent principle or consistent with the the uh, with the salaf of this ummah the, the pious predecessors and that is that people's statements and their actions are measured by the text and the ijma, meaning the consensus. So whoever is in agreement with the nas, meaning their their actions or their statements are in agreement with the nas, agreement with the text, meaning the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, or the ijma, the consensus of the salaf or the consensus of the ummah, then it is accepted from him. And whoever differs with one of them, meaning the consensus, or differs with the uh, with the nasus, the Quran and the Sunnah, whoever differs with one of them, then they uh, their statement is rejected, no matter who he is. Beautiful, beautiful statement to, to protect us from blind following anyone, to protect us from, and, and if we practice those statements, we will safely safeguard our religion from many of the fitna, the fitness that come about in this day and, and age. We will protect ourselves from so much fitna because then by not blind following, you may hear a fatwa from one sheikh and he may be a sheikh known from the sunnah, but his fatwa maybe is not in accordance with the sunnah, the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Maybe he missed something. Maybe there was a mistake and another alam or ulama have pointed out that mistake. So we cannot follow him in that mistake. We don't follow anyone in their mistakes. And if we practice those principles, we will be able to avoid a lot of the fitna that we see between Ahl Sunnah at times and, and between others that, that people, a lot of times they hold on to principles or in a particular opinion that may not be supported by the Quran and the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or in accordance with the minhaj of the Salaf or it may be in a, a, a very rare opinion or a very strange opinion. But if we stick to that which is salim, that which is sahih, that which is correct, that which, which, which is known, we'll be safe. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.